desktop for a second. Let's go to the desktop. Okay, so this is my Linux desktop. I have, I have Steam running, and in Steam I have Elden Ring running. So, uh, there I have Elden Ring. It's running, and then I have my, um, I have my OBS running, and then I have a. Um, I have a, a browser. This is a Linux browser. Um, and it's running my, I have it running my, um, my chat, my, my, um, my Twitch chat. So I can monitor that. Um, and then now let's see, I'm going to, I've been experimenting with a bunch of hardware and a bunch of other things because I want to do more than just play Elden Ring and stream on Twitch. I want to I want to do I want to go places, I want to go to to other locations out in the real world and live stream from some different places. I might want to go over to a friend's house and live stream from their house. I might want to go to one of my favorite restaurants and live stream from the restaurant. I might want to go to the beach one day uh Especially if it's a cloudy day and there's some lightning out over the uh, out over the ocean because I really like that stuff um, And then of course uh, it, would be, it would be pretty cool to live stream from that situation. I'll have to figure that out uh, But it might be cool. Uh, I want to do some I want to do some things that I haven't seen other people do on Twitch now I haven't really watched a million Twitch channels, so I Maybe there are people doing this, but it looks to me like it's either... Most of the channels I've seen fall into two categories. A, people playing video games. And that's certainly very cool. And I've, I've just got into video gaming this year, earlier this year in, in April. And I, and I downloaded Elden Ring and I got Elden Ring running on Linux. And it runs perfectly, it runs great. I get a full 60 FPS. No glitching, no weird artifacts. I've been playing it for months. It actually took me months to get through it because it was my first game and I and I totally picked like one of the hardest games you could pick. But I love it. It's and it's amazing. It's an amazing game. So, I see so that's the first category of streamers on Twitch is people playing games. I see a lot of people playing uh Elden Ring uh, v Rising, uh, Apex Legends, um, what else, what else? Uh, just a, a bunch of popular games I see people streaming, and some people, you know, will play the game for a little bit, and then they'll chat with their, with their visitors, their audience, and that's nice, I, I, I and I want to do that too, I, I, if you come in and ask me questions, I totally want to talk to you, I'd rather talk to you than play the game. The other category of Twitch streamer that I see a lot of are really cute girls and they're just hanging out maybe with a friend or even by themselves and they're and they're just they're hanging out in a hot tub or they're hanging out uh I don't know um and you have like 10,000 people tuned in to watch this girl just talk about her life and and interact with the chat and wear sexy clothes and that's fine that's that's awesome i love it i love it i'm 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 not putting it down in any way i think it's great i think it's i think it's amazing that people can make money can make a living uh just talking to the camera and entertaining people and being funny and being cute and wearing cute clothes and i think that's i think that's great i think that's a great thing now I am not, I'm not a, an expert gamer. I struggle with this game. Now, maybe people would like to see me struggling with this game because maybe that would be kind of kind of funny. I don't know. Uh, and I'm certainly not a cute girl. So um, I can't really, uh, I, I can't really do either of those categories really well and, and become like some super popular streamer. And I'm not even, I'm not even trying to become 
some super popular streamer. There, there are other things I want to do. There are other projects that I'm that I'm really working hard on, and I want to use Twitch as a way to communicate with my audience about those projects and about things I'm doing. I want to be able to. I. I I love the fact that you can interact with an audience and you can stream live and you can do all this live. I think it's amazing. I'm still learning how to do it well. I'm 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 trying to say um a lot less. I'm trying to enunciate my words so I'm easy to understand. Uh, I'm just trying to get better at this whole at this whole speaking thing. I've I've never done it my whole life. I've always been kind of a kind of a behind the scenes person. I'm I'm a photographer. I'm a I'm a developer. A developer in the in the sense of um, computer software, not not real estate developer. I'm a, I'm a software developer. Um, damn it! I just said um. Anyway, I'm a photographer, and most people know me as a photographer. Uh, a Saturday night, I shot Rabbit in the Moon. I've got some great pictures coming. I don't have those to share yet. I still have to process all of them, uh, edit them, adjust them. Um, but I but I have a lot of photography that I want to share with everyone. I have a lot of really cool stuff to share. And so I'm looking for ways to do some things on my stream. I'll, st I'll still play video games. I, I like video games, but I still, but I want to kind of do some unique things. So, and, and the other thing is I'm doing everything on Linux because I just, I believe in Linux as an operating system. I believe it is ready for mainstream use. I believe that you can do just about anything you want to do in Linux uh, look at my desktop. I mean, this could be, this could be Mac or Windows, really. I mean, I've got, I've got a bunch of apps open. I've got a taskbar down here at the bottom. I've got a, a kind of a menu that I set up to be like, like a Windows start menu, which, which I like this kind of menu better than, than, uh, Mac OS. Uh, I just like this kind of setup, but you'll notice that it's also a little different than the Windows 10 start menu. I'm going to actually move my my head out of the way so you can see the, the menu better. Um, let's move it up here a little more. And then let's go like this. So here are my most frequently used apps. Um... And then, you know, I can still use, if I want to go to, where's my, okay. So here's my Office apps. You know, if I want to use Microsoft stuff, I can still use all the Microsoft programs online. I can still use Word and, and, and uh, PowerPoint. And uh, I don't use a lot of that stuff, so I'm not real. I mean, I do use Word, um, Excel. I can do all, I can use all the programs online or I can use this this free version of similar programs. They have a spreadsheet program. They have a word program. They have a they have a, a presentation program like PowerPoint. But is this is all open source and free? I can use either of these. I want. I can save I, if I use if I use Open Office. I can save files out in Microsoft format, and people with with only Microsoft programs can open them. There's all kinds of cross compatibility here. Um, now the other thing I can do, and I'm not going to do it right now because it might crash my computer uh, because I have Elden Ring running. However, I can, if I need Windows 10, I can open Windows 10 in a virtual machine, which means a, a window will open and Windows 10, uh, an entire Windows 10 computer is running in that window. And I can run Windows programs and I can do all the normal Windows stuff. I test, I test my, my websites in uh, all the different browsers in Windows, in Edge, in, in, in the Windows version of Chrome and Firefox. Um, I can do all that stuff. So, that's, I, I feel like in my Linux environment here, I can do pretty much anything. Anything I want to do.
Now, of course, every operating system is going to have its own little, uh, its own little unique things. You know, there are certain things you can do on the Mac that you can you, you can't do on Windows. There are certain things you can do in Windows you can't do on the Mac. There are certain things on Linux that I can't do on either Mac or Windows. And it's it's just like that. It's it's everything is has its own little personality. And it really comes down to which operating system is going to do the most for you. Uh, and it's you know, and it's also about which operating system is going to cost you the less, the least amount of money uh, to do all the things you need to do uh, to be as productive as you can be without spending thousands and thousands of dollars on on software that where they just keep raising the price every year and they charge you by the month and they just all kinds of crazy things. I'm looking at you, Adobe. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for alternatives to all of my software that I used to use on, on the Mac, um, and on Windows. I've found, uh, DaVinci Resolve to completely replace Adobe Premiere. It is actually a better, uh, video editing program. It is used professionally by, by major production studios, and I bought the the professional version of it was like $300, but it's a one-time purchase like Adobe programs used to be back in the day. And I paid full price for my Adobe CS6 suite, production suite. I think I paid $1,200. It was, I paid full retail because I had a, I have a business. And so it was a business expense. But anyway, I don't want to keep rambling on and on about that too much. Um, I will, I will be happy to answer any questions any of you have about Linux. I'm, I'm certainly not an expert. I am, I am, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a noob, but I, I certainly have a lot of stuff to learn. Um, but I'm happy to share anything that I've learned already. I'm happy to suggest programs that you could use on Linux to replace programs you're currently using on Windows or Mac. Although more and more companies are also releasing Linux versions because they see more and more people are using Linux. So I'm happy to talk about any of that. If you have any questions, I'm happy to, to have a discussion about that. And if you are, if you are a, an actual Linux person, and if you have a ton of experience, uh, and you want, and you need, you want to tell me, things or, or teach I please teach me stuff teach me some new things I, I love learning I'm constantly learning and I want to learn all this stuff now let me show you two things that I've been experimenting with over the past week and the first one is I want to I'm a professional photographer I've, I've done that for years and I and I have a bunch of not a bunch, but I have several really good professional DSLR cameras, and I want to use one of them out in the world to do live streaming. Now, I know I can't stream directly from my DSLR camera, but I want to, I want to connect my camera to my phone, and then I want to stream from my camera through my phone, because I can just do all kinds of crazy things with my camera. I can put different lenses on it. I can, I can adjust the focus point. I can, there's a lot of cool things I can do with my, with my professional camera that is, that is just better than anything you can do on a phone. Even the new iPhone, even though that camera is great and it's amazing. And I see people shooting videos with it all the time in low light. And it's an amazing camera. You still can't do what I can do with my DSLR camera. So I want to have the connection I want to shoot live with the DSLR camera, but be transmitting through my phone because then I can be anywhere. I can be anywhere out in the world. I don't need Wi-Fi. Um, so that's, that's what I want to do. Now, the first step of that is getting the output from the camera into a format that I can bring into OBS Studio. So the first step was to get the camera to work with OBS Studio on my PC, on my Linux PC. And I did that with a capture card. And I got a couple different ones. And I started off with some cheap ones. So this is a, this is not the $300 or $400 capture card. This is a $36 capture card that I got on Amazon. Now let's go to that scene. Uh, let's go here. Okay, 
Now, this is with the capture card connected to my PC, but the camera is off. So the camera's turned off, Now I'm just gonna reach over here and turn on the camera. And there you go. So this is the live image. This is a live image from my uh, DSLR camera. This is a Nikon Z6, and I have a 35 millimeter 1.8 lens on it. And we are currently at, I'm currently at 2.8. So I'm at f2.8, um, a 30th of a second, and I'm at ISO 800. And I'm gonna zoom in. I can zoom in on the camera. So that we can see, we can look at my focus. And I want to be focused on the center of my cool little plasma thing there. So I can just manually turn my lens. And you can see how I can just tweak the focus. Because the autofocus is going to focus on the outside of it. It's not going to focus on the center part of the device. And then let's go back out, zoom out. There we go. Now I can just, sorry, I can't stay on cam, but I can just go over here and I can just kind of play with my cool little plasma thing. I love this thing. Someone gave me this as a gift and it's so cool. Um, so there you go. Now that is my, this is my DSLR camera, this is my Nikon Z6.